Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear. Um, I've got a little bit of an interesting video to do for you today. Um, last week I put out on my Instagram stories that I was looking for a Sebenza 21 to borrow. Um, the Chris Reeve knives, Sebenza, is something that I've never owned. Uh, I've been a knife guy for my entire life. I've been collecting knives for like two years now, something like that. I've owned a lot of knives, some of which are far more expensive than the Chris Reeve knives, Sebenza. I shouldn't say far more, at least a little more. Um, many knives that are less expensive, uh, a whole gamut of things. Um, and if you follow the knife community, you probably know that the Sebenza is kind of a benchmark within it. Um, Chris Reeve knives did a lot when they created the Sebenza. Um, he invented the frame lock, which we owe uh, to a lot of the, we owe a lot of the existing knives in the community to him for that reason. Um, the frame lock is one of the most used, especially on high-end knives, um, locking mechanisms that there is today. So we kind of owe that to him a little bit. Um, he was instrumental in creating S35 VN blade steel. Um, so there's a lot that Chris Reeve knives has done uh, for the community. But like I said, I've never owned one. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and I'm going to get into a little, little bit. Uh, but first, I wanted to explain why I asked to borrow one and didn't just go and buy one. Um, because I've had plenty of opportunities to buy them, uh, both new and on the secondary. Um, but I just have never really wanted to, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, there are some things about the Sebenza that I'm just not sure I'm on board about. Um, I think it's a nice knife. I think there's no doubt that it would make a great EDC knife. Um, I think there's, there's plenty of good publicity around it. There's a lot of people who say it's the greatest knife of all time. Um, but, uh, let me explain some reasons <laughs> why I'm not totally on board. Before I do that, um, I want to say thank you so much to Sam Didio. He's the one who sent me this one. If you don't follow Sam on Instagram, do. He's a fantastic guy. Um, he's been one of my friends in the knife community for a long time. Uh, we've been in a really cool group chat together for quite a while, and uh, we joke all the time. I have a great relationship with him, and I appreciate him sending this to me. So um, I'm going to be borrowing this knife for a week. I'm going to have it in my pocket all seven of those days, and I'm going to be testing it. Um, I purposely wanted to borrow one that wasn't in perfect shape. Uh, this is a knife that he uses and carries, and uh, so I'm not going to be hard using it. I'm not going to be doing anything crazy with it, but typical EDC stuff, opening boxes, light cutting tasks, stuff like that, and uh, just overall seeing how it feels in the pocket, how it carries, um, and whether it grows on me or not. Um, I wrote down a list of a couple of things that have stopped me from buying the Sebenza in the past. There's tons of versions of it. Um, there's a lot of great Sebenza options if you're looking for a Sebenza, but there's a few things that for me have caused it to not really justify the dollar signs that go next to it. Um, so I guess the first one would be, I think it's overpriced. Um, and you can hate me for saying that if you want to, um, but let me explain why. I've owned several knives um, that both new or secondary prices, if you compare them to new Sebenzas or secondary Sebenzas, cost me less than a Sebenza would. And the workmanship, uh, the craftsmanship, the fit and finish, the action, and very importantly, the materials on some of those knives were much better um, than the Sebenza is. Um, I suppose that's a little bit subjective. It's my opinion that they're better. Um, but some of it is a little bit scientific as well. Chris Reeve knives helped create S35 VN blade steel. S35 VN blade steel is an awesome steel. I really like it. I have no gripes about the steel other than when you're charging me over $400 for a knife that's using that steel. Um, same thing with companies like Medford knives using D2 still. Um, these knives or these steels are great. They're really, really good steels. Um, good at edge retention, good at toughness. They, they have attributes that are a reason why these companies use them. And I don't discredit that. But their competitors oftentimes these days are using steels that are better. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it. Um, I would much rather have 
M390 S3 or sorry, uh, not S35 VN M390 CPM 20 CV uh, CTS 204P. Um, I just got a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 in 10 V blade steel. There are blade steels out there that outperform S35 VN in today's day and age. When S35 VN was created, no, that it was the creme de la creme. It was great, but S35 VN and titanium for $450 new or secondary, maybe $350 or $300 if you can find one that's a little bit used and kind of beat up a little bit. It's not there for me. Um, my Olamic Wayfarer, which I would argue had every bit as good of fit and finish, build quality, uh, craftsmanship that went into it, um, that had M390 and was within the same price range. I bought it at a show and got a good deal on it directly from Olamic um, and paid probably what I'd pay for one of these on the secondary um, for a brand new titanium frame lock with a milled titanium clip, ceramic bearings, ceramic detent, lock bar insert, just gorgeous finishing on it. Like eh. to me, I feel like my dollars should go somewhere if I'm buying a knife in today's day and age, because it is so competitive. Um, so price is my number one, number one reason. I don't think before carrying this and using it, keep that in mind. This is a test to see hopefully that I'm wrong. And then I end up just buying one of these at the end. Um, but before really experiencing a Sebenza, I've only handled them before. I've never carried one, never cut with one. Um, we'll see if I'm wrong, but don't think the price is worth it. Um, blade steel is just okay. If this was a $200, $250 knife, then, then you're competitive. There's a lot of $200, $250 titanium frame locks that are using S35VN. And if they're dialed in right and the workmanship is there, then it is worth that price tag. But start doubling that amount, not so much. Um, the next thing is the finishing on the knife. Um, let me explain that. I like the finishing on the Sebenza. I think it's a good looking knife. Um, I've got no gripes about it. I like the way it feels in hand. The texture of this titanium, the way they finished it does provide a little bit of purchase on it. Um, it feels good to me, but as somebody who watches the secondary market pretty closely, I do a lot of buying, selling, and trading of knives uh, just so I can try new things, move pieces around, um, freshen up my collection. It's fun for me. I see Sebenzas all the time. Uh, small Sebenzas, large Sebenzas, uh, inlay Sebenzas, uh, exclusive Sebenzas. The number one thing that I see, if it's a Sebenza that's been carried, that's not brand new in box, um, is that there is always a report of it has snail trails. <laughs> so there are other ways to finish titanium that don't show wear as easily. Um, I get that that's not important to Chris Reeve knives, obviously. Um, and some people love that it kind of shows the wear. You get your own kind of patina and like evidence that you've worn it in over time. I think that can be cool if you're buying this knife with the intent to keep it forever. But like I said, part of me being in the knife community and trying a lot of things relies heavily on me moving pieces around. And so I, I don't necessarily like the idea off the bat um, of getting a knife that is going to show wear super easily um, because then it's, I, and I'm going to lose money on it. When, like if I buy one to pick it up secondhand and I put a bunch more use on it, then I can't justifiably ask for the same amount that I paid for it to sell it again because I added use to it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Meanwhile, if I buy something that doesn't show wear and I've pocketed it, maybe cut some paper, um, but it looks exactly the same, the edge is still exactly the same, um, then I won't feel bad about asking the exact same amount. Whereas something that shows that it's been in my pocket a bunch and you can see that the clip got scuffed here and there um, just because the finish they put on it, that's kind of a bummer to me. So I don't know if that makes total sense to you, but to me, that's something that's important. Um, the next one would be um, on the Sebenza, there's no lock bar insert. Um, I understand that they, I think, carbonize the titanium and there are other people who do that. So the, Chris Reeve is not alone in not having a lock bar insert, um, but in now 2020, they just came out with the new 31. Um, it has a different lock interface. I think there's a ceramic ball in there now or whatever, um, but they're still not using a lock bar insert with over travel stop. And that's just kind of become the standard uh, for titanium frame locks these days. Um, it seems like every one that comes out now has that. So it's weird that they're still not. Um, 
I haven't had it in pocket and used it enough to say that it causes an issue. And I think if it really did cause a big issue, frankly, people would be upset about it. Um, but I do find that technologically, I don't understand why they don't just add that, especially for the price. Um, there's going to be a lot of especially for the price in this video. Um, the next one would be, and I already, kind of already touched on this, but the competition for the Sebenza has come a long way over the years. When the Sebenza first came out, I think it probably was the best, nicest EDC knife you could get. Um, it's meant to be a knife that you can work hard with, that you can use and enjoy, and will stand up to that. And at the time that it came out, it was probably at the absolute top of the field. I wasn't in the game at that time, so I don't really know who the competitors were per se, but I can say that right now, from what I can see, both US made and overseas made competitors are offering more for your money than Chris Reeve Knives is. Um, it just, yeah, again, to the same thing I started with, the materials, the craftsmanship, the designs, um, the R&D, like I, I don't think that Chris Reeve has a leg to stand on at this point to say that because of their R&D and materials, it's worth that amount of money. I think it's worth this amount of money because it has the following it has. Um, and that that is what it is. Obviously, if they can keep that business model going and they have a ton of uh, just a loyal fan base and it works for them, then awesome. Um, but unless I learn something new in this experiment of carrying it every day, um, I will keep buying the competitors before I buy them because the competitors are giving me more features for less money. And that's just kind of the way that it works. Um, next thing for me, uh, being a knife guy, one of the things that I really like in a lot of knives is fidget factor. And for some people that may be totally irrelevant, but for me, it actually is kind of important uh, because I really like to play with my knives. Um, I use my knives, uh, most of my knives, some of them are so nice that I frankly don't really use them all that much. Um, but most of my knives I use and I don't mind using hard. Um, but there are times when I'm not using my knives, like 90% of my day, probably more, 99% of my day, I'm not actually cutting something, um, but I'm sitting on the couch or I'm sitting at a desk or um, I'm in the car, whatever it is, I like to be able to fidget with knives. Now, the Sebenza has an action that is praised, and I think rightfully so, as being hydraulic and kind of glassy and smooth, um, but it is not, it's not fidgety, um, at least in the way that I like to fidget with knives. Um, I have a Protec Mordax right now. That's on bearings. It's a button lock. And if I press that button with the blade open, it just drops shut. Uh, the Koenig Arius I had for a while was probably the best action knife I have ever owned or ever even handled. Um, and that knife was super drop shutty. It had multiple deployment options. It was just fun to play with. Uh, very satisfying knife to sit there and open and close and just move around in my hand and feel. Um, so to me, that's something that's kind of important in a knife. And this knife doesn't have that. Um, I may be able to get past that if certain other aspects of the knife really shine. And then I can just, when I'm in a spot where I'm sitting to fidget with a knife, it won't be the one I pick up, but it will be the one I carry to use. Maybe that's the case. Um, but I like it when a knife can do both things. I like it when it's a knife that works well for me, goes great in hand. Maybe it's something like a PM2 where it works great for me, the performance is fantastic, um, but it's also a compression lock and fun to play with, and I can fidget with it and middle finger flip it, and just, to me, this is more fun to play with, and this knife isn't even broken in yet. Um, also on washers. So, anywho, the fidget factor for me, this doesn't fidget well. Um, next would be the hype kind of bothers me. Um, let me explain that a little bit. There is a certain part of the community that believes, and I'm not going to say that they're wrong because I haven't done this experiment yet, but they believe that the Sebenza is the greatest thing to ever happen to the knife community. And I can give them that historically it has done a ton for the knife community. Um, the technologies that have trickled down from this knife, uh, the way that it has incentivized other companies to make bolder moves forward and advance themselves. Um, we owe a lot to this knife but I think that its competition has surpassed it. And in fact, I think it did it a while ago. So the guys who defend this knife 
um, to the death, seemingly, stating that S35VN will forever be the best blade steel, um, and that an action on washers like that, this is the only way to do an action, and it just like, there, there's so much, um, I see kind of two philosophies. Some people either defend like crazy for the Sabenza and they act like everything about it is perfection personified and it is the end all be all of pocket knives. And then there's another camp that apologizes a lot for it. And they will say that these are the things that are wrong with it, but I still like it. I think it's fair that they do that. Um, but I've owned knives that are this much money that I don't feel like I have to apologize for. Um, and I also don't feel like I have to claim that they're the greatest knife that's ever been created and nothing else can ever come after them except a newer version with a different inlay. Um, it just, it bothers me a little bit that some people are, are so die hard about this knife. And so I think that's part of why I wanted to do this experiment at the end of the day. I think it'll be interesting for me to see for myself um, how right or how wrong those people are. I think the people who are so absolute about it um, probably have some blind spots. And I don't mean to stir the pot too much here by making this video and saying all this stuff about Sabenza fans. Um, but I, I just think it's interesting um, that it's so applauded by so many. Um, and there's definitely gotta be something I'm missing <laughs> or I just have very different tastes than a lot of people, which I don't think I do. I think a, a lot of the knives that I purchase and enjoy, I see are also very well enjoyed by other people. So it would make sense that, um, if so many of the people that I respect in the community love the Sabenza so much, I've got to be missing something about it. So I'm going to be enjoying it for a week and, uh, seeing what comes of it. But um, I guess those are kind of my, my initial thoughts. I will say having this one in hand, I, like I said, I've held a few Sabenzas before. It's a nice knife. It feels great. Um, I do think it's, it's heavier than I always think they are before I pick them up. Um, there's no internal milling or anything like that. It's definitely not a lightweight knife. Um, if I compare it to my PM2, which isn't totally fair, this is G10, this is titanium. Um, it feels noticeably heavier than my PM2. Um, but the, the fit and finish on it is great. I love, I love, I love that they round the spine. I love it when any knife company does that. Uh, one of my favorite things about my Giant Mouse GM2 that I used to have is how well rounded that spine was and how well dialed the jimping was. This one has fantastic jimping as well. Um, I really, really like this jimping. The ergos work great for me. Um, I will say that I'll have to get used to a little bit how much of a cutout there is to get to the lock bar there. I definitely feel that with my pointer finger. Um, but the size is good. This is definitely a comfortable size for me to EDC. It's great in any grip seemingly that I put it in. Um, the grind is fantastic. Everyone applauds this hollow grind. If you want specs and details on this knife, there's a billion other videos out there that you can watch of people telling you everything that's great about it. Um, but my first impressions are, are pretty good. Um, I, I definitely don't hate the Savenza. I think it's a great knife. Um, but you have to take everything else I just named on that list um, in with that because I think there are too many people who maybe overlook all of those things. Um, because of the hype or because of, I, I don't know what, maybe I'll find out. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. I definitely like it. I think it's a nice knife. We'll see if it justifies the price tag in my mind by the end of this exercise. Um, but it's nice. It's cool. It's, uh, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to trying out and checking out. Once again, thank you so much to Sam. Really appreciate it, buddy, that you would lend me this to check out and try, and uh, I owe you one. So as soon as you think of something from my collection that you want to borrow and try for a little bit, you let me know, and I'll send it on over to you. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a fun little experiment, and uh, I'll update you probably once kind of in the middle, let you know how it's going, um, see if I've learned anything at that point. Uh, so it'll probably be over the weekend. Right now it's Wednesday. I'll have this up tonight, Wednesday night. Um, on April 8th, I think today is. Yeah. Um, and then I'll do a full recap and a kind of a diagnosis, if you will, or final thoughts, um, on, uh, next Wednesday, a week from today. And so, yeah, the, the clock starts now. We'll see how it goes. Um, uh, but this is the Sabenza 21 drop point, plain Jane, single thumb stud, and I am 
starting my week with her.